everyone, good morning. Today I'm going to be working on the last free code camp project for Python. So I've already done the other four in streams so far, and you can also find them on my YouTube channel. And I quickly read over this a little bit, and I think it's going to be the hardest one so far. So I don't think I'll stream it all today. I'll probably do a part one, part two stream and see how it goes. So yeah, hey Kel Maddie. Hey Pevan Astri. Welcome to the stream. Um, so yeah, that link that I just posted is the Free Code Camp project. And then again, if you click this link, this will actually open up um, an in-browser environment to basically build the whole project in. So I already did that because it takes a minute to spin up this REPLit here. So um, yeah, so basically I'm going to read over the README instructions real quick, just like recap them, I guess. Um, it's similar to what we did last time in, ter in terms of having to create a class and class methods and variables, but there will also be, um, I guess, it, Li some library usage and also some calculations that need to be figured out with taking averages and finding random numbers and things like that. So um, you've probably heard this type of problem before. It says, suppose there is a hat containing five blue balls, four red balls, and two green balls. What is the probability that a random draw of four balls will contain at least one red ball and two green balls? Um, so yeah, and it's not just the probability, if it was the probability of just one experiment, it might be pretty straightforward, but we also need to factor in the probability of a large number of experiments. So, um, yeah, so first we create our hat, we put our balls in the hat, and then basically, um, we have another function which is experiment, and we pass in, let me see if I can find a function call, here we go. The probability, we call this experiment function, we pass in the hat that we created, uh, the instance of the hat class, and then we have the balls that we expect, how many balls we're uh, drawing total to get the expected balls, and then the total number of experiments as well. So there's some complexity to this one. Um, and then it's just explaining about where to write it, giving you some hints, stuff like that. So it gives us these files here. Um, hey, Coding Garden fan. Uh, let's see. It gives us these files. So we have the probability calculator where all our code is written. And then the test module that we can look at with all of the tests that they're going to run against our code, um, which is nice that we can see them here. And then main.py just basically is there to run the tests against our code. All right, I've actually never looked at this rep replit. I guess it's a config file. Okay, cool. So here's our probability calculator. I'm going to go ahead and comment out the experiment because I'm not using that yet. And for the hat class, I guess I'll start here. So I can walk through in the markdown file, I can walk through all of the instructions step by step here. Hey, I'm good. How are you? I can't pronounce your name. Slicher? Um, yeah, if you just joining or you don't know, here's the free code camp project link again if you want to do this for yourself. So I'm starting on step one right now. So first create a hat class in the probability calculator file, which is where I'm at. The class should take a variable number of arguments that specify the number of balls of each color that are in the hat. So, um, Oh, I see. Okay, 
I was thinking, because I need an init function to initialize whatever I'm passing in. Um, so, okay, let me leave that blank for right now. And I guess I do need self here. And then I was thinking that I would do like a bunch of variables here, but actually what it's telling me to do is contents. So a hat will always be created with at least one ball. Okay. The arguments passed into the hat object upon creation should be converted to a constant contents instance variable. Okay. So I need an instance variable named contents here. Hey, data dev, how are you doing? All right. And each item in the list should be a color name representing a single ball of that color. Um, okay, so it wants me to create a list. So basically, I'll get um, I'll get a bunch of named arguments passed in, so I can get them with uh, keyword arguments. Okay, and then contents. I need to basically create. A contents list here from the keyword arguments. Oh, this will be self.contents so I can access it. All right, for example, and then it goes on to the methods and stuff that I need to create. All right, which seems to be just maybe one method. Okay, so I need to basically loop through the keyword arguments and return them in a list. The problem is it's not just it's not just looping through and returning them one by one in a list because if red is two here, then I need to put two reds in the list. So let me think, how can I do that? without making a mess. Um, yeah, because if it's just one, I can just, I could just make a simple inline loop and do that. But if it's two, so let me, let me create a for loop. Um, is there any way to push multiple objects push any number of one type of object onto a list i'm gonna search for that actually so python push variable number of items on list or maybe multiple of the same item okay Um, no, 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 that's not what I want. Uh, push multiple, multiple of same item. I don't think I've ever had to do this before. How about a for loop for the colors? What do you mean? for loop for the colors because basically I'm going to be looping through the keyword arguments here that are passed in and then create a list and set it to self.contents or I could do self.contents.push yeah that's probably what I'll do okay put multiple items Um, yeah, I guess I could maybe map. Um, it's not exactly what I want. So 
And I'm, I was thinking about this, and this probably isn't the best way, but I was thinking about turning it into a string. Taking, let's say we have two reds, so it would be red, uh, I don't know, red plus two. No, 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 red times two. And then I could times the string and then split it and then push those items onto the list. Basically just put the list that I'm creating from this and push both items at once or append them. Um, okay. Should I, let me look at the, why don't I just put append here? Because that's the Python syntax anyway. All right. Append same value. Oh, there we go. I wasn't searching correctly. Um, hmm. To add V n times to L. Okay. I wonder. Can I try this out? I want to try this in a REPL. Oh wait, it does give me a REPL here. I can do this, right? Can I... Oh. There we go. Okay, Python 3.8. So, what did I just copy? Okay. So, I'll make L a list. And then... Yeah, let me do this. So L equals a list, N equals two. Let me zoom in more. You can see it. Um, okay, so L is a list, N equals two. What was the third variable? V. So V is a string. So V will be our red string. Okay. Now let me see. Oh, sweet! Sweet, I didn't think about that. Okay. So, and I didn't know, I, I don't think I've ever done this in Python with lists. I just multiply strings, but I guess if I multiply a list, um, then it puts a multiple of whatever is already in that list. That's awesome. That makes it easy. Python always has these built-ins. Okay, so, and then this will be the original list. So if I go back over here, I can for, let's see, for, what am I doing? For, um, item in kw so if I'm looping through keyword arguments then do I have to do keyword arguments because this is a, a dictionary so maybe I can do keyword arguments or I want both the value I want yeah I want the key and the value so basically I want the key and the value in keyword arguments so what was it items items let's see is that the correct syntax guess I'll try it out and see Oh yeah, I would have to create an instance of the hat class. 
so to call this so I could do uh, I guess hat equals call the hat class and then pass in let me copy from here so oh yeah yeah now let me get the easiest one red and orange all right hey everyone why am I wearing a hat today um because my hair is messy and I like wearing hats and I really like this hat yeah this is my favorite hat um let's see okay so I created the hat so this should run if I run this file so Python probability calculator yeah cool that's easy so now I want to do basically the same thing here so except I'm gonna move this because I want to be appending to it so I'll move it here so I have self.contents and then I'll do self.contents and I guess I can just do plus equals and then the value is the number so I'll do the value times and then the key which is the string yeah and now after I've added all of those let me print out self.contents again oh yeah I didn't put that together that's true, it's because I'm working on a hat problem today. Okay, let me... Cool. All right, that works, that was easy. Um, I think that's it, yeah. One, two, three, four, five red. And five orange. Wait, there's only four orange. Oh yeah, there's four orange, I counted wrong. Okay. Let me go back to Markdown and see what's going on. Okay, a hat will always be created with at least one ball. The arguments passed in. Yeah, so they're already, I converted them to the contents list. So that's done. The hat class should have a draw method that accepts an argument indicating the number of balls to draw from the hat. Okay, so I need to do def draw self and then number of balls. Um, this method should remove balls at random from the contents and return those balls as, oh, okay. I see, so it takes the balls out of this contents list that I've created. And and this is where I'll use the random module. So I'll randomly uh, watched Expand series, it was awesome. Yes. Oh, if you don't know, Expanse, the Expanse is a um, a TV series. It's on Amazon Prime here in America. I'm not sure where else you can see it. Um, but it it's a sci-fi show. It's like the best show ever. But they haven't made a new season in a little while, but they're coming out with season six soon. So if you haven't watched it, get caught up before the next season comes out. Uh, the characters, everything. Yeah, it's just really good. It's... In my head, I I think it's better than some of the classics that, um, like Battlestar Galactica and stuff like that. I would put it as maybe, I don't know, maybe the best sci-fi show. Okay, anyway, so hats can have a draw method. So I need to figure out, okay, first I need to randomly select a ball from self.contents. So let me, okay. 
randomly select a ball. Um, wait, what did it do? No. Okay. And then move ball from contents. And then what was the, oh yeah. And then return selected balls move I guess num of balls yeah remove balls from contents return selected balls that's basically what I'm doing in this function oh thanks Slater thanks for the sub there are a couple robot emojis that I have and now apparently you can do GIF emojis on Twitch, which so I might be adding those for subs. Um, okay, so I need to randomly select each ball and then I'm gonna, each time I'll remove it from self.contents and save it in a new array. So let me create a list here. So I guess I'll do balls make that a list and then yeah I guess just four um, four n in range num okay so I want to loop through it this number of times and this is where I'll randomly select a ball each time. So let's say ball equals, um, yeah, I have to do random here. So I need to do, use the random module, which I can't remember the syntax for. So uh, Python random in list, let's see. Hey Homeless, this is live. I didn't know anyone did recordings on Twitch. Is that a thing? No, I've never done a recording on Twitch. Everything is live. On YouTube, pretty much everything is already recorded. Okay, so I guess I'll just click on any of these links. Okay, import random. Mm, Random.sample, I think that's what I want. So I need a random sample uh, to generate random number list. So, oh, this would actually give me a list. This is probably what I want because this would give me a list of all of the, um, yeah, this would give me a list of all of the randomly chosen balls. And then I could just loop through that list and like pop them and push them onto the new list. Okay. So I'm going to do random dot sample. Um, what am I building? Oh, thank you. No trope. Yeah. I'm working on the free code camp project. <clears throat> One second. So this is the last project in the Python series, and then I'm going to have to find more projects after this. Okay, so ball, so actually I won't, or no, I'll put this outside. I'll use the for loop for something else. Okay, so, or wait, I'll get rid of that. Okay, um, balls, so this will be random dot sample. And then I can pass in the, r mm. 
No, it will be in the list. So... I'll pass in the list. Um... And then pass in the number of items that I want to select from the list. Is that... Yeah, that should work. So my list is self.contents. And... Hydrate. Uh, oh, okay. I just drank water. Yeah, I don't have all of the same commands as um, Coding Garden and people with awesome setups like that. Okay, so num. This will be the number randomly selected in that list. So ball should be that. Um, should be a complete list of the random selections now. So let me print out balls now. And now let me do hat.draw. Who is Coding Garden? He's one of the most popular, if not the most popular coding streamer on Twitch and on YouTube. You should definitely check him out. He's a lot of fun too. Um, let's see. Okay, hat.draw. And then I need to pass in a number, so I'm going to pass in three. And that should print out this. So let's let's try this. Okay, so this is what the draw function printed out. It's orange, red, orange. Now if I do it again, it's orange, red, red. Alright, so it is randomly selecting. That was easy. That's awesome. Python gives you all this good stuff. Okay, so I randomly selected those already. Um, now... But now I can just loop through balls directly. Um, well, I want to remove them from the other list. So... Well, let me see how I'm going to do this. So here I'm going to have a new list. No, actually, this is already one I want to return. So the only thing I need to do right now is, well, let me go ahead and return balls. Those are all the ones I drew. So the only thing I would need to do right now is to remove them from self.contents and everything else is done. Is he the Japanese guy? I don't know. I'm not sure. He might be. Um, maybe? Let's see. If you see... I mean, he has lots of plants flying around and heads flying across the screen and you know, he does lots of fun stuff and he's almost just fun you know, just watching him say hi to everybody and, you know, not even doing coding um, the whole time. Uh, let's see. So, if I want to remove... Um, do I want to find it every... find the one every single time? I wish, like, in random.sample, I wish there was a some kind of flag that you could say remove the sampled items. Uh, I saw the view filtering, but the filtered posts are not staying on the main page. Actually, I asked in Discord. Oh, okay, I haven't seen that question yet. I'll take a look at it after. Um, that was my last live stream from Tuesday. Okay, so random dot sample da, da, da. yeah those are just more python random dot sample all right Um, where 
is sample here? Okay, random dot sample. What is counts? There's a third. Okay. So you pass in the list. You pass in how many items you want to sample from the list. Um, I guess you pass in any number of non-keyword arguments, and then you pass in the keyword argument counts. So, what is repeat elements can be specified one at a time or with the optional keyword only counts parameter? Um, sample. Okay, returns a K length list of unique elements chosen from a population sequence or set. Okay, uh, returns a new list. Is there another Python function that removes it from the list? To choose a sample from a list of integers. Okay. Um, Members of the population need not be hashable or unique. If the population contains repeats, then each occurrence is a possible selection in the sample. Repeat elements can be specified one at a time or with the optional keyword counts. Okay, so for choosing yeah, that's not... Okay, never mind. I thought maybe there was an item. I guess I could search and see if Python random sample remove from original list and see if that works. Random range. One option is to shuffle the list, then pop the first two elements. Oh, okay. Basically, this is a different way of choose of choosing a random element. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, how in the world do you test and make sure that I've actually chosen a random element and not just chosen an element off the front or the back of the list every time? <laughs> how did I learn programming? Um, I wrote some articles about how I learned if you're interested in checking them out. Um, I can't go uh, too much into that on the stream right now, but if you go to freecodecamp.org slash news, I think, let me see if this pops up with me, but these are the articles that I've written for Free code camp. Maybe it's no. Wait. Oops. Yeah, anyway. I'm somewhere here. Yeah, somewhere on Free Code Camp News. Uh, you can find all my articles and um, I don't know I'm called Gwen F or Gwendolyn or something on here if you search your search engine uh, DuckDuckGo or something then you can find um, my author page on free code camp so um, yeah and then I wrote, like, I don't know, I've probably written a dozen or so articles about how I learned different things, how I got into coding, stuff like that. Okay, so back to the problem. I need to remove balls from contents. So 
I kind of like the suggestion of instead of doing random.sample, I could do random.shuffle and pop them off. Just pop off, remove the beginning or ending elements in the list. Um, yeah, and if I, or if I remove them each time through a loop. So I could do shuffling and that seems um, that seems like it would work, right? Would that be any different than random.sample, which takes a random, picks a random item out of here? Because otherwise I have to loop through all these balls and remove one of each of them from the list. So let me go ahead and loop through four uh, in range num. And then I can do um, ball equals random. No, no, no. Not shuffle. Let me do. Okay, so if I do random.shuffle, does that shuffle in place? Random.shuffle. Yeah, that does. Okay. And then he's basically slicing it. Alright, so if I do random.shuffle on balls. No, no, no. I would need to do it on self.contents. So, so actually I want to make a copy. Is this the best way to do this? Reduce the background sound? Okay. It's on almost all the way down, but I'll turn it down again. There we go. Oh, drunk time lord. Oh, for your talk. When is PyCon? What are the dates for it? Oh, it's in September, so they should be responding soon. <laughs> um, print balls. Okay, for so I'm looping through the range of numbers, random.shuffle. Um, and I don't want to do it directly on self.contents. So maybe I can do... I really like this though. Um, but I can do... Let's see. So if I'm doing it this way, let me get rid of that. Calls equals, or let me do contents, make a local variable to this function and do uh, self.contents. Is there a copy or something? Yeah, copy. So this will make a copy, right? So now I'm not mutating the original list. Um, okay, so now I can shuffle it without worrying about changing anything. Oh, but, oh, and then I'll have to reset. I'll have to set contents to self.contents after. Well, if I'm setting it to a shuffled thing, then, sorry, I'm going through this in my head. Um, if I'm setting, <laughs> I'll have to set self.contents to contents in the end anyway, so I get rid of the things that are um, that I should take out. <sighs> no, I don't think I'm going to shuffle the list because then I'm, I don't know what tests are going to fail if I change the order of stuff because it doesn't mention shuffling here. Right? So maybe I should just randomly sample and then remove those items from the list. Let me see if Python has that. So Python remove 
list of items from another list. That would be convenient. Um. But the thing is, I don't think this will work. It's using a list comprehension to basically say only include things in the new list if they're not in the other list. But since I can have duplicates, that's not going to work. F filter won't work. Remove, I think remove might be good. Do you know how the shuffle algorithm works underneath? No. I don't know exactly what algorithm they use for shuffle, but that is a good question. Um, yeah, maybe we can find out or post, or if you find out, you can post about it in Discord after. Let's see, remove can also perform this task, but only if the exception of not getting specific elements is handled properly. Uh, one can iterate for all the elements of the removed list and remove those from the original list. Okay, yeah. So, list.remove. Yeah, so maybe I'll just, because I have to remove all of those from the other list. I think that would be the easiest thing. I don't want to go through all the shuffling and whatever okay don't need to copy anything don't need to do any of that let's just uncomment this and i'll loop through balls and i'll say for ball oops for ball and balls so that will be the string and then i can just say self dot contents dot remove ball yeah I think that should work right um, wait is remove so this I can pass a string into remove right it doesn't have to be an index uh, let's see let's see what happens print self dot contents okay so let me run this function again. Let me clear this and do Python probability calculator. Sweet, it did remove, I assume, the right ones. Um, let's see, one, two, three, red, one, two, three, orange. Here it's one, two, three, red. Yeah, so remove two reds and one orange. So I could probably print this out to make sure it removed the same or the correct ones. Yeah, red, orange, red. Remove two reds and one orange. Okay, perfect. So this is working just like it is right now. So let me get rid of this and that. Okay, awesome. Switch also works with index. If you have duplicate values, remove, we'll only remove the first one, yeah. Okay, so I have the draw function. So I think I've pretty much done the hat class, which is a lot simpler than I thought, but I think the complexity might come in the experiment function so I don't know if this is gonna load but in the markdown over here um, I have like 15 more minutes maybe 10 or 15 minutes so I'm gonna go ahead and start this function all right so I'm gonna have to load the readme on this side for some reason this doesn't always load very well Okay, so 
I did all of these things. Now I'm down to the experiment function. So it's a function that should accept the following arguments, hat, expected balls, um, number of balls to be drawn, number of experiments, and the experiment function should return a probability in the end. Okay. And then it goes into the calculation a little bit here. But let me just set up the function first, and then we can think about that. All right. So, uh, let's say def experiment. And then, okay, we need to pass in the hat, the, oh, it, this is the definition down here. For some reason, I thought that was calling the function. I don't know why I read it like that. All right, so I have this then. I have the definition. Pass in hat, expected balls, number of balls to be drawn, number of experiments. Now I need to step through return prob probability. I just made that for now. Um, so what do I need to do first in this function? There's, there's just a whole bunch of steps. So I'll have the number of balls to be drawn. So I'll have to have some kind of loop and call the draw function. Or no, not even a loop. I'll just call the draw function on hat. So I need to do hat.draw, and then I'll basically pass in the number of balls drawn. Um, and then that will return a list So of the balls that I drew. So it will be something like this. Um, OK. Let me see if the markdown loads. Yeah, there we go. Expected balls, for example, to determine the probability of drawing. So this expected balls will be a dictionary. Okay. So the experiment function should return a probability. So I feel like there's a lot of steps here. And it just kind of gives you what each argument is. And then... Um, just dives right into getting the probability. So for example, let's say that you want to determine the probability of getting at least two red balls and one green ball when you... Um, sorry, I got distracted by the chat. Oh, if you want to learn Python, the books that I recommend are the No Starch Press or from the publisher, No Starch Press. They have a couple, like, um, oh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to Python. They have, like, a couple introductory Python ones, but they're all really good. So, yeah, I recommend checking those out. Anyway, um, for example, let's say you want to determine the probability of getting at least two red balls and one green ball when you draw five balls from a hat containing six black balls and four red balls and four green balls. I feel like I need to map this out. Okay, this is what's already in the hat. What's the probability of getting this out of the hat if you draw five? To do this, we perform n experiments. Yeah, uh, count how many times m. So n is the number of experiments. Uh, M is the number of times we get at least two red balls and one green ball. 
so out of the total number of experiments, how many times do we get two red balls and one green ball? Okay, so each experiment consists of starting with a hat containing specific balls, drawing a number of balls, and checking if we got the balls we were attempting to draw. That's easy when you spell it out like that. Okay, so uh, starting with a hat. So I need to make a hat. Oh, the hat's passed in already. Yeah. So let me get rid of this. Okay. So one second. Let me turn off my notifications. Okay. So we get at least two red balls. So we, um, yeah, we have the hat. We're drawing a number of balls and checking to see if the balls... So we're going to have to do this every single time through. We need to loop through the number of experiments. So I'm going to do four um, i in range num experiments. Okay, and then this needs to be indented. And then we draw the balls and then we check, check if balls match expectation. Tation. Okay. All right, I think that's good. We need those variables though. We have n, which is the number of experiments already, but we need to keep track of m, which starts out at zero, so we can find the probability. And then the probability is going to be, oops, um, m divided by n, so number of experiments. All right. So, yeah, you can buy them off of Amazon or they have those no starch books on their website, whatever their no starch website is. Okay, so I don't know. I'm so close to being done. I wonder if I can finish in the next few minutes. I have to get to work. Um, check if balls match expectation. Yeah, how do I check? That's really the last thing that I need to do. I have the list of balls that I drew out of the hat. Now I need to check if... Well, I, okay, so I can turn this into a list. I can turn the expected balls into a list and then see if the list is in this list. I think that's what I'm going to do. Anyone have a different idea? So that's what I'm doing here. I could create a helper function for this, actually, but I think because I'm in a rush right now. Let me see. Um, I'll just take expected balls, the items, and then this will be. Um, I guess expected balls list. Well, I need a list first before this then. So. Okay. And then, so I, anyway, I created a whole list of those. And then can I check? I don't even know if this is the proper syntax, but like balls.contains all of the items from EB list. Like if I'm supposed to pull two red and one green, you know, did I pull two red and one green? Um, yeah, I don't even know if this is proper Python. Okay, let me look this up. So Python check if uh, 
items in list are in another list. Okay. You can still you can still use the subset functionality. Subset Okay. So set but I don't want to number of occurrences does matter though. So I can't because the set will remove the duplicate, so I don't want to do that. Okay. Um if you need to check, check sets in. Oh, you mean I can just do, yeah, this is JavaScript, I think. Um, this, or that would be the opposite way. EB list in false. And I mean, I, I would be checking, so it would be if EB list in balls, then M plus equals one. No, I just de disqualified your idea. Oh, because of sets, yeah. Okay, um, but I can't do this, right? Would this take it element by element and see if it's in balls? So, yeah, I don't know. I'm so close to being done with this, though. Um, I see how other people doing it. So, yeah, an item for item on list A. Um, Works, but has the same issue of not keeping count of occurrences. Here's a one-liner solution, um, which is okay. So true if sequence a dot count item. Oh, this is checking the count too, seeing if it's in there in the count. Um, is that you want to treat your list as multi-sets rather than set? Yeah, I don't know. Um, check if a list is contained in another list. I'm guessing this might have the sets thing too. And I'm guessing I can't just use in because that won't, it either won't keep track of the number of occurrences or, I don't know, does someone have an idea what I should do here? Um, okay, A equals, my cat is hungry. I don't know if you can hear him meowing. He wants attention. All right, remove elements. Um, range. He gets mad when I lock him out for streams because I don't want, he'll come up on the desk and like sit right here in front of the computer screen and me. Um, list comprehension. Uh, checking if the whole list A is contained within list B or not. Um, does is subset eliminate duplicates? Um, well, the way they were using it on a set, it was. Can you do is subset of a list, not a set? 
I guess it should be a list method, right? So if I did... Wait, is subset... I don't know if they have it here. Is... No. Um, yeah, is subset... My computer's running hot right now. Yeah, is subset here. So if list one is a subset of list two. So I can try that. I can say, um, maybe I can do it in the shell. Let me copy what they're doing here. So I have these two lists. Or let me copy it one at a time. Okay, so let me get back in there. Now I have list one, and then I'll, I'll put in list two. Wait, there we go. Hi, Saez. How are you? Thanks for the follow. I'm almost done. I'm just really trying to finish this last part of this challenge so I can call it a stream. Okay, so I'm going to just try, instead of changing it into a set, I'm going to see if I can just directly do list. So is subset list 2. No, I can't do that. So it has to be a set. Um, what if I do list one in list two? False, even though it should be true because there are two C's and an A. So I think I'm just going to take someone's solution and if you already have counters, which might be useful alternative to store your data anyway, you can just write single line. Import counter. I mean, that would be, that's just a helper method that someone else already wrote. Um, without try accept. I'm going to try this and see. Okay, yeah, let me try it and see. Looky here. Is that where I was just at? I think it was just at. Why the, why the, um, what is it? The Johnny Five emote. The scared, nervous one. Okay. A test list, sub list. Use all. All X in. Oh, that's easy. All X in test list for x in sublist. That's seeing if sublist um yeah sublist is in test list basically. Yeah I am going to take that and try here. So let's see Test list will be balls. Sub list will be EB list. And I haven't done any debugging of this or anything, but I'm just going to run the tests and see what happens here. So let me go to the console. I'll just clear it and if I run the test, these are the official 
like running the whole test module against my code. So let's see. Nope, something happened. Maybe because I didn't have any error handling. Uh, probability line 25 balls equals hat is drawn. Sample is larger than population or is negative. Okay, so the sample, wait, am I supposed to, let me look at this test. So trace back main dot pi value error. So let me see where this error is. So sample is no, it's not in there. So maybe it's directly in main dot pi. Oh, this must be a built in error that Python throws. Okay, so from random.py. Um, so I guess I need to catch that. Is it expecting me to handle that error? I didn't see that in the markdown. Okay. Oh, okay. It says the ball should not go back into the hat during the draw. If the number of balls to draw exceeds the available quantity, return all the balls. Oh, okay, so the problem is in my draw method. I didn't correctly implement it. I see. Test for zero length list. Um, okay, so it's throwing an error here. So, I guess all I have to do is, um, do a try catch around this. Um, yeah. So if I do try, but then I still want to remove all the balls. So maybe I'll just wrap this only this function and accept here. I'll just do a bare accept and otherwise set balls equal to self dot contents and then this will remove all the balls it's kind of a cheap way to do this i guess um all right the python curious okay let me try to run this again okay well, I didn't do too bad. It was one test failed. Uh, test probability experiment. Delta expected experiment method to return a different probability. Okay, so assert almost equal. Actual expected delta. Um, 0 0.002 does not equal 2.72. Yeah, so my probability is off somehow. And I have not debugged any of this. So yeah, maybe next time I'll just start the stream off because I really, I really have to get to work, so 
Um, yeah, I didn't test any of this. I just kind of wrote it without testing it. But I need to figure out what's going on here. Something's wrong with my probability calculation. And it might just be something stupid or maybe I'm dividing wrong or something like that. But I'm guessing it's going to take me a little while to figure this out. So I'm going to do this in my next stream. So, uh, oh, if you want to actually look at this, you can see my code. Thanks, no trope. So that's my code because it saves it automatically under this, I guess, repo or what do you call it? I guess it's my repl.it that I created. Um, and then if you want to do it by yourself, you can just go to the free code camp challenge page here. Thanks for the follow homeless. Good luck if you end up uh, starting to code. Oh yeah, join my discord and if you find a coding book that you like or you know, let us know what you're going on, what's going on and what you're learning in Python. Okay, I can exit out of these. Yeah, other than that, I have a video coming out soon on my YouTube channel, so you can check that out. And I'll see you for at least one, hopefully two, live streams next week to finish this up and work on some Vue.js and some other things. So have a great day, everybody.